Good. Yeah. Good evening and welcome to our 19th Transforming Lives webinar, which is brought to you by the Belvedere Seventh-day Adventist Church in association with Premier Entertainment Services, Jamaica. It is our hope that these webinars will be transformational and help us all to be fitted for the kingdom of God. We want to thank you, all our viewers on both platforms, Zoom and YouTube, for your continued support week after week. If today is your first time seeing this program or our faces, please stay because a blessing awaits you. But, and we, you can also check out our other videos. We have covered multiple topics such as depression, family finance, premarital sex. So you can go ahead and look at all those videos. For those of you watching on YouTube, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And please turn on your post notifications so that you'll be notified whenever we post. And we ask that you continue to be respectful to to each other in the comment section, but please leave your questions as they will be answered by the panelists. Now, last week we looked at depression and this week we'll be looking at heartier matters and we'll zoom in on the subject of cardiovascular disease and diabetes. However, I'm not the one that will be taking you through because I am not the doctor here. We have our lovely moderator who we missed last week Dr. Karen Lewis, and she'll be guiding the discussion this afternoon. Now, if you don't know her, which I'm sure many of you do by now, she has a doctorate in emergency medicine and has over 20 years experience as a physician. But before Dr. Lewis Harvey comes, where Brother Michael Spence will ask for God's blessing on this evening's discussion. I am your host, Regina Bullock, and it is my pleasure now to hand over to our moderator. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you again for another opportunity to serve. We pray, Lord, for your blessings upon this afternoon's program. Inspire the minds of the panelists, and may the hearts of all of us who watch and listen be touched, and we make the necessary changes in our lives to become better children of thine. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another program, another very interesting program. And this afternoon, we have with us our panelists, and I'm, and I'm going to introduce them to you. We have had them before, but today I'm still going to introduce them to you. And um, the first one we have is Dr. Cooper. Now, Dr. Cooper is founder and director of Cooper Wellness and Disease Prevention Center. Dr. Cooper's Internal Medicine and Faithful Path International, Inc. She has dedicated over 27 years to positively changing healthcare outcome both nationally and internationally. She's a number one best-selling author, speaker, and physician who holds an active membership in the American Academy of Lifestyle Medicine and the American Medical Association. She hosts the popular TV show, Get Healthy with Dr. Cooper, which airs bi-weekly, locally and, and, and on Fox. And some of her books include Get Healthy for Life, 14 Days to Amazing Health, and Incredibly Delicious Vegan Recipes. Welcome, Dr. Cooper. Thank you. Our next panelist is Dr. Errol Bryce. Welcome, Dr. Bryce. Dr. Bryce is an assistant professor of medicine at the Texas Christian University, University of North Texas Medical School. School. He is um, president of New Steps to Health nonprofit organization. He's also a general conference lay evangelist, and he's the former health ministries director of the Texas Conference. And he's um, married to Hortensia for 40 years and has three successful professional children. He eats a plant-based whole food diet. He walks about five miles every day and he's walked more than five miles this week. Mm -hmm. And he does not eat anything after 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. 
And the other panelist we have is Pastor, Dr. Pastor Samuel Bolgin, who is a senior pastor of the Atlanta Belvedere Seventh-day Adventist Church for the past nine years. And he has a doctorate in ministries. He's authored four books and he served pre previously as the president of the Bermuda Conference, stewardship director, and he was the executive secretary of the Greater New York Conference. Welcome to our panelists this evening. So this evening, this afternoon, it's not evening yet. This afternoon, we're gonna be talking about cardiovascular disease and diabetes. And I'm sure this is a very topical issue in this day and age when there's so many people who still, even though we have a wealth of knowledge, there's still a lot of people who do not have the handle on this disease and the implications on how to control, how to maintain uh, their, their diabetes and even how to advise relatives and friends who are diabetics and also how to manage cardiovascular disease, whether it's a complication of diabetes, um, hypertension or other causes. And Dr. Bryce is gonna do a presentation to us. We want you to put your questions in the chat. We want to have a very interactive session this evening. We want to be able to talk to you, answer your questions, get all the, 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 the myths and the facts known. So please, everybody, put your chat, put your, um, your, your, your questions in, your concerns, any little thing that you know, you want us to clear it up, put it in, we will talk to you. We'll try our best to answer your questions as much as possible. So I hand over to Dr. Bryce, who's gonna be doing a presentation for us. So let me try to share my slide and get that all. Tell me if you no, can- we're seeing it. You're seeing it quite well? Yes. very good. Very good. All right, thank you so much. Well, this has been a tremendous educational process for me being with you through the month of um, November. I, I promised Brother Spence that I'll be here for November. And so today's my last day. And um, the last week we had a very spirited um, discussion with Dr. Um, Fider and Dr. St. Victor on, um, on depression. And I tried to challenge them a little bit on the, the, the fix that comes from God. And this week, I'm gonna be pushing that a little bit um, stronger. And I'll be telling you a story about Bill and, 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 um, and Evelyn. But before we do that, I wanted to um, outline some very humbling features of diabetes. Now, what I'll be touching on is not, um, I only have 20 minutes. And I'm not going to be going on the definition and the statistics and all of that. I'm just going to be touching on a few themes that point to common solutions for diabetes and coronary artery disease. And if you push it, the, the, these themes also cover Alzheimer's dementia. The same factors in diabetes, the same factors in coronary artery disease, is the same factors in Alzheimer's dementia and uh, most of our disease processes. And I wanted to, um, uh, come on, here we go. So talking about diabetes is a very humiliating process and it's better to come into it um, with a lot of humility because it, to come in thinking that you know it all and have all the solutions um, sooner or later, you're going to embarrass yourself. We want to make you know that there are two types of diabetes. There's type 1 and there's type 2. So when you speak at churches, when you talk to people, you, you have to make sure people recognize that some of this, they have no responsibility of getting diabetes. So not everybody has the same thing. So type 1 is actually a process where your body actually destroys the cells that make insulin. It's an autoimmune process and the person has no responsibility of that. So you can't really let the person feel bad. That's what you're eating or anything like that. The same thing with type two diabetes. 
it turns out that there are about 36 to 40 different mutations that cause type, type 2 diabetes. So it's not, you know, because they're overweight. I'm sure you've seen a lot of patients who are overweight who don't have diabetes. So obesity does not cause diabetes, okay? It's very important to understand that. There are other rare causes. My grandmother, for instance, had a rare type of diabetes called moderate onset diabetes in the young person. It's a, it's a mutation that she had. And so she didn't get to go to school because she had diabetes in, in kindergarten, which was not type one. And that was a, a rare um, genetic change. So we have to be very careful when we um, uh, you know, approach people. We must recognize that their diabetes in itself does not cause diabetes, okay? And, and um, as I mentioned, diabetes type two is a result of mutations, a lot of which occur at birth, okay? Now, um, these changes in your genetic receptors or in the insulin process, along with belly fat, may not necessarily will, may lead to type two diabetes. So we, we have to make sure we, we, we are very, very uh, compassionate when we reach out to, to people. And we don't know how much belly fat actually produces weight loss, but we do know that weight loss and exercise can prevent and may reverse in some, if not most individuals, okay? So this is very important that we understand this. I'm gonna share with you, um, let me see if, um, oh, good. And this does change, good. I'm gonna show you a story uh, about Bill and Evelyn, a patient of mine. Um, um, Bill had severe congestive heart failure. In other words, his heart was shot. He had two coronary artery bypass surgeries. Um, he had, a, bi he had a, a pacemaker, he has a defibrillator. We did a number of scans on him, a number of stents. And he was in the hospital every single week. He, he would be out one week and he's back. And I got to a point, I brought him in the office and I said, Bill, you can't live in the hospital, okay? We're gonna have to put you on hosp uh, hospice. For those who don't know what hospice is, hospice is, is a program they have in the US where when you get to a point, they just give you comfort care. They never go back to the hospital. You have about six months to live. So Bill, um, his wife, Evelyn, came to me afterwards and she said, Dr. Bryce, hospice came, they brought a lot of morphine and they, 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 and they said, Bill can't go back to the hospital. Is this the end? And I said, Evelyn, yes. If we've done everything we've done. He's had multiple heart cats. We just can't do anything more for him. And she said, Dr. Bryce, I've been with you for almost 30 years. You always come up with something. And, and every time Bill gets to the point of death, you bring him back. Is there nothing? And I said, Evelyn, there's one more thing. But you're a Texan. You can't do it. So I said, what's that? I said, you know, Evelyn, if you go on a special diet, Bill could actually, even where he is, reverse his congestive heart failure. And she said, Dr. Bryce, I don't care what it is. You tell me. So she left. They ordered, they're well-to-do, they're millionaires. She ordered a chef. Chef came to my office and said, what's the special diet you want him to put on? So I gave them a, a book, Plan to Plate, and I said, this is um, plant-based, whole food, nothing processed, nothing with cholesterol, um, everything organic, and I gave them what, and so they went off on it. After about three weeks, she came back, no, two weeks, she came back to me and she said, Dr. Bryce, um, can I fire the, che the chef? So I said, I said, Evelyn, I told you that you couldn't do this thing, okay? You're a Texan. She said, no, 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 no. I'm not going to change the diet. I, I just want to fire the chef because they're charging me $5,000 a 
a, a week to do this thing and I can do it. I can do it myself. So I said, sure. Next thing I heard from her about four weeks later, the emergency room physician called me and said, Dr. Bryce, I have a, a lady here and she refused to be admitted to the hospital. Her blood sugar is 40 and she refused to go to the hospital. She needs to be admitted. She keeps saying, I didn't believe the doctor. I didn't believe the doctor. And, <laughs> and I said, well, what happened is I put them both on a plant-based whole food. The husband is a terminal congestive heart failure. She has diabetes. And I didn't think she was going to eat it. So she went on the diet. She rehearsed, reversed her diabetes, blood sugar dropped, and kept taking her medicine. So we took off our medicine, went back. Um, after about six months, took bill off of um, hospice. A whole year passed, never went back to the hospital. Her diabetes went away. So her diet, just with a change of diet, the congestive heart failure was reversed. The diabetes was reversed. And they, Bill said to me, you remember that, that trip that we wanted to go on? And they went and toured the United States of America for a trip that they wanted to do and they couldn't do. Completely reversed. They actually crashed. Both of them fell asleep driving and ended up in the ICU. And they survived that. And the last time I saw them, their kids took them, took away their car. And that was the last time I saw them again. Two years, no symptoms. Friends, I mentioned this to the group last week with diabetes. God has a fix and he's saying we can't fix it. All the bypass surgery, all the, car, all the stents, all the, all the, um, the, the defibrillator, everything, the statings. And this guy came to a, to a state where he was on hospice. John 15 and verse side says, of me, without me, you can do nothing. If we're willing to take the fix that Jesus has, friends, we can do everything. And we got to remember the whole process with the diabetes coronary disease, it's about restoration of his image. That's what it's all doing. And Philippians 4 and verse 13 says, I can do all things, which means reversing diabetes, reversing coronary disease through Christ. From my, as far as I'm concerned, the Bible is in everything. And if we take on that fix, there's no problem. So if you're interested in, with this fix, the question you got to ask, one, do you want the fix? And who do you trust? Do you trust Satan, the enemy of the soul and his methods? Or do you trust Christ and his method? You can ask yourself if you want to fix, what do you eat? What are you eating right now? After our first meeting, a sister called me and she's eating fish every day. And she's wondering why things are not working for her. And that might be the best that she can do. But is this the best for you? When do you eat? When do you get your biggest meal? In the morning or in the evening? Everything that Satan, that God does, Satan does the extreme opposite. We're going to touch on that. When do you sleep and how long do you sleep? All of these are common factors in coronary artery disease, diabetes, depression, malignancy, hypertension, all of these answering these questions. How much and when do you exercise? How much is your belly fat? The insulin resistance that comes from this belly fat, do you have it? The inflammation, which is the common connection in all of these, how much is in your body? Where do you, the food that you're eating, does it have cholesterol? The fix that Jesus has, that food has no cholesterol. The food that, the cholesterol was never made to come into the human body. So when you eat it, the body has not know what, what to do with it. So the body dumps it in the arteries. Your glucose, the food that you eat, how fast does it come, up, come into your body and how much does it grow? So the fix, friends, in order to know what to do, and this is very important, 
So if you get nothing more from the next 10 minutes, in order to know what are the best foods, we must study God's original plan for man's diet. All of science is now coming back through randomized double-blind studies they're coming back finding truth that it was what God instituted. So one of the things we gotta do if we're gonna treat coronary artery disease, we, we have to reduce our, our intake of calories. We have to reduce our intake of saturated and trans, this is what science is, is now accepted. Saturated and trans fats, that's animal meat, okay? You go back to the to fix that God has, science is now saying, this is what we have. Reduce sodium intake. Here you find that on a plant-based whole food, the salt contents is minimal. Less than five milliequivalents is um, salt. While with the food of the, of, of the everyday diet, you're looking at 250. In one study in England, the, the jerk chicken uh, was almost 2,000 equivalents, increasing physical activity, all from the Bible. I'm gonna jump over this. So John um, five and verse six asks the question that I'm asking, do you want the fix? If you get nothing today, Ministry of Healing, page 296, and this was done 1909. It says grain, fruits, nuts, vegetables constitute the diet chosen for us by your creator do you want it or not okay that's the question that we need to answer in terms of losing weight you have to be taking in less calories than you're putting out and you'll find out that on the diet that god prescribed it fills you up okay expands the stomach and you're losing calories and you're not hungry, okay? Nothing has been has shown to be as effective as that. A review of 13 studies showing for coronary artery disease, for diabetes, it is now clear that a plant-based whole food is the fix to the point where the American Diabetic Association two years ago accepted this fact and just made it the mandate for physicians. I couldn't believe it when I saw the publication in um, published in Diabetes Care, okay? So if you go back to what God prescribed the original diet, diabetes, coronary artery disease, if you just trust him and go back to it, you have overall, overall care. And let me mention to you the American College of Cardiology last year also made that the official best diet overcoming the Mediterranean diet as the way to go forward. So Genesis 129 from the beginning has the fix. So in Exodus from Egypt to Canaan, we had manna. Manna on Sunday, manna on Monday, manna on Tuesday, uh, Escobit manna on Wednesday, roast manna on Friday, and, and, and fried manna uh, for, for preparing on Friday for Sabbath. Every single day is manna. Most probably it wasn't fried. <laughs> Baked. Okay. Baked. Thank you. <laughs> so, so, friends, if this wasn't important in restoring God's image, they would not put it there. Seven Adventists, I don't know if you've heard of that group, in eight, June 21, 1863, declared that the best approach for coronary arteries and diabetes. T. Colin Campbell, in 2004, the China study reiterated the same um, process. Calvin Esseltine um, did the same thing uh, in 1995 and published a, a very small study but came to the, complete, the same conclusion that you can actually reverse the process. And, 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 and now the college, American College of Cardiology has accepted this. And then this year, 
in May 2020, after reviewing all the literature, they come to the conclusion uh, 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 um, a whole food plant-based diet maximizes, watch me now, listen to me, wake up, maximizes the antioxidant potential within our cells by providing essential vitamins, including vitamin A, D, E. It also helps to eliminate harmful carcinogens. One week we did cancer. Even in cancer, the Bible comes forward. It, it, it eliminates harmful carcinogen and geronal toxin, the poison that makes us age and make our skin look, look horrible. All of that is provided here. It has been shown to lengthen the telomeres, which I had time to show you what the telomeres are. When your telomere is, is done, you die. This diet, this fix actually extends lifespan. Um, it has shown here that um, it, they, your, it, it, your, your, when you eat this food, you produce PYY, which shuts down your appetite. Here's another point I want to mention. Genesis 2.15 talks about physical activity. Andrew Reynolds published that when you walk one minute after you eat, for every minute after you eat, you drop your blood sugar one to three deciliters per milliliter. So here's, here's the story, friends. We were told as a church, June 21, 1863, that a nice walk after your meal is of tremendous benefit. It is only until 2016 that planet Earth is now aware of this. <laughs> An enzyme called GLUT4 transporter that is released every time you move lowers your blood pressure, meal timing, quickly. Your cortisol level is highest at six o'clock in the morning. It is lowest at about six, seven, eight o'clock at nights. God made it that we get the bulk of our meal first thing in the morning. By two o'clock, you see the cortisol level dropping precipitously. The way Satan has arranged it, we're eating the bulk of our meal when the cortisol level is now almost not there. So everything turns to fat. Your melatonin level, if you have eaten a high fat meat, it reduces your melatonin level. And that is the repair process. If you go to bed at 11, 12 o'clock at night, you miss all of that melatonin um, um, surge and the repair process that fix you. When God made us, there was no electric light. There was no CNN. <laughs> there was no fax. Okay? So if you want to see Eve, you have to reach out and touch her after six o'clock. You know, it, this is how it is. And so the earlier you get to bed, the more you go back to the Garden of Eden, the better. All right. So um, I want to finish. I promise, Brother um, Spence, that I wouldn't go too, go too much. I want to touch on this point. You're, you're hearing a lot that um, six small meals is the way to go. Okay? And we're talking about our church told us um, two, two meals. That's what we were told. is actually the best. Unless you're a farm worker, and you're throwing cotton all day, or you're an athlete, you, only, you, you, you don't need more than two meals. Ellen G. White had one meal seven o'clock in the morning, and she had another meal at seven o'clock, at one o'clock, and she doesn't eat, she didn't eat until the next day. I didn't know about that. I just heard about that about a month ago. I've been doing that now for years. I have my breakfast at seven o'clock. I eat again at 1.30. And by God's grace, I don't eat them. I, I don't do that every time. Sometimes I'm under stress. I don't I miss my meals and I eat. But 99% of the time, that's how it works. Friends, a number of studies now have shown clearly that that plan is the best one. And let me finish by talking to you about this guy here, Walter Bruin. Walter Bruin 
The world's oldest man died at 114. He attributed his longevity to eating just two meals a day and working as long as he could and always embracing change. Friends, by precept and example. I want to finish by mentioning some, some positive things that we have in Jamaica. Growing wild. The wild variety of turmeric, friends, is the number one anti-inflammatory food for Alzheimer's, for coronary arteries, for diabetes. The next thing I want to touch on, friends, is sorrel. Um, I don't think I put in it here. Yeah, but before I finish, I want to touch on sorrel. They call it hibiscus. Um, when I go down by my sister, she's in St. Elizabeth, I ask her, can you bring some sorrel for me? She said, well, what kind of, I said, I want it fresh. That was picked same day. I take off the, 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 the sorrel and I eat it raw. It tastes like jimbling. For those who know what jimbalin tastes like, eating it raw. That's how I eat my sorrel. That is one of the most powerful medicine for coronary artery disease, for, for diabetes, for Alzheimer's dementia. Okay? This is something we can do. But in the food, garlic, the peas and the beans, the these things have ACE inhibitors. Okay? The food, God designed it to not only prevent, but to reverse these processes. And so let me finish by asking the question, do you want the fix? Yes or no? And God is able. And friends, calories restriction with a plant-based diet is the best. Front loading of your calories, two meals between 6 a.m. and 4 p.m. is the best. Physical activity to reverse insulin resistance. Intermittent fasting. Two meals a day, unless you're a construction worker, you're planting yam head every day and you might need three. Adequate sleep, get into bed no later than nine o'clock, not having eaten anything after four o'clock. Supportive therapeutic relationships, small groups, um, church, important. These are things that are very important. And whatever skills you have as a child, if you embrace these friends, at 90 years of age, you'll be doing the same thing, okay? So let me tell you, man, th there is a lot of life ahead. I am looking forward to another, um, let me see now, another 40 years of quality life based on what I'm doing. And I wanna leave, finish with a picture of a 96 year old Seventh Day Adventist enjoying the time of his life, having embraced these concepts for coronary artery disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's dementia, yes, depression, <laughs> and schizophrenia, and malignancy. It serves for all of this. I, I finish with a question, friends. Do you want the fix? Amen. Yes, Thank I you, do. Dr. Bryce. Thank you, Dr. Bryce. That was quite interesting. And I think everybody would say yes. Yes, we want the fix. We definitely want to be healthy because it's um, not being healthy is, is, is very expensive. <laughs> not being healthy is very, very expensive. It's cheaper to die than to live an unhealthy life. It's very expensive. The, 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 the long-term repercussions from not having a healthy life is horrible. And you talked about Bill and what's his wife's name? Evelyn. Evelyn. You talk about Bill and Evelyn living in the hospital. The hospital became his home. Every day he goes to the hospital, he comes home and he goes back next week. He had no quality of life. This is a man who had no quality of life. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what we get when we, we were ill. The quality of life definitely decreases. And, and, and I think everybody should say, yes, we want that fix. And, and, and I'm happy that you talked about sorrel. I had some last week. <laughs> sorry, 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 Dr. Bryce, I live in Florida. <laughs> I had sorrel, in fact, I have 
in my fridge right now. I have sorrel drink. And it's, it's, it's a very good thing because it's something that's readily available, even though it's seasonal in Jamaica. It's something that's very, very available. And it's, a, it's I've never had it. I've never eaten the fruit like the, the, the flower like that, though. Uh, I never I never even thought it could be eaten like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's a good thing. Hi, 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 Brother Gordon. How are you? I see you're joining us. Happy to have you. Indeed, so, indeed. Um, I'm delighted wow. to be on and connecting with the big ones in the field. I've learned so much. I just, just yesterday, Dr. Bryce, I started transplanting my sorrel. So oh. for the, a couple of weeks, I'll, you know, my sorrel plant will be big and doing well. I, I and, 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 and Brother Gordon, you're late. Your sorrel is late. Uh, yes, I'm aware. <laughs> uh, actually, I got back home here in Jamaica later than I'd planned because of my international uh, mission across and when I came back I started but I just planted yesterday. I'm Nonetheless you still will have your sorrel definitely. Yes yes. <laughs> so 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 Dr. Cooper you have been talking about you you, you have a, an interactive um, tv show you have your books on 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 vegan dads and how to live a healthy life and 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 how, what advice would you give to, to, to people who are struggling with this plant-based diet? Well, I think, um, first of all, one has to assess your situation, realizing that, well, I have diabetes, I'm on 100 units of insulin, I'm on four pills and my sugars are still high. What do I need to change? Something needs to be done. So they have to define the problem and then they have to say, why? Why do I want the change? If they want the change, it will be done. I will give you a story to answer that question. So I was in my office one day and a jug rep walked in. He said, hey, Dr. Cooper, I lost 30 pounds. I said, how did you lose 30 pounds? He said, I just picked up one of your magazines and that's where it began. He came back a couple of weeks later. He said, I lost 20 more pounds, 50 pounds. And my daughter, who is only three years old, is asking me for kale smoothie. Now, I didn't speak with that family, but he wanted the change. He read about what he needs to do in terms of going plant-based. And he made the change. He took his family and he had tremendous success. So I will advise people who know that eating healthy is what they need to do, but they're having difficulties. What I suggest, I suggest, first of all, make it simple. Just ensure that your plate, half of the plate is plant food, fruits and veggies. And I suggest starting off with two cups of leafy greens, and a cup of steam, anything steamed veggies. And they will start to see a tremendous difference in their life. I'm not gonna to touch the carbs or even the protein yet because studies show that in the last several years, the reason why we're having these, the rise in obesity and diabetes is because of the change in our food selection. We are now consuming less vegetables. And that's one of the reasons. So I suggest they go gradually, make sure they look in their plate, be conscious and make sure half of the plate is just um, vegetables, some steam, some raw. Okay, thank you so much. Um, but uh, uh, yes, we, we, we address those people who are obese and need to lose weight, but, but there are some people who are diabetic and 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 of note, I saw this person recently, and um, he came in and I said, "What well, did you check it?" Well, he wasn't. He he came in with his 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 significant other, and I said, "Did you check your blood sugar this morning? What was it?" And he said, "It was four ninety plus," and I said, "What?" And he said, "Oh no no, that's not too too bad. It has been more than that." And I'm like, you know, I mean, he's a skinny man. <laughs> he's probably about six four. He's a very skinny man, but his diabetes is like at 490. He's like, 
it has been it's, it's like he's nonchalant it's 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 okay it's it's not that bad and 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 i mean a person like him who doesn't need the he he Wait. needs to he says i need to gain weight which is possibly true but somebody who needs to gain weight and who is not controlling his diabetes um how do you how do you do, do you encourage him to to be on that dietary change Okay. take away his his because he's telling me he eats oh my my wife bakes and and her she's a good baker and and i didn't have a lot i just had two small pieces just mm -hmm. two small pieces yesterday mm -hmm. you know how do you encourage him to even though he he may not need to lose weight he may need to put on a two pounds or more but he needs to control his diabetes okay doctor um let me see harvey Louis Harvey, a study was done and published in the um, one of our journal, American Journal of, of Medicine. And it shows that the most common factor for poor health is food. A lot of people want to learn how to change to a healthier way of eating. A lot of people with diabetes, the reason for the high sugar it's really the type of food like this gentleman you spoke about. Sugar is over 400, wife likes to bake, but he ate a small piece. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> you know, what, when I come to my patient, so I do have a lifestyle center. In my lifestyle center, I have a kitchen, I have a gym, and patients are taught how to eat and how to cook. But I usually ask them to bring the wife or ask the wife to bring the husband. I, I like to counsel family together. And it is diabetes, lowering the blood sugar is the easiest thing to change when you change your diet. I, I'm currently running right now an eight week to wellness program at my wellness center. And I have a lady who has been my patient for about 24 years. And I, can, I couldn't get this lady to understand the need to change her lifestyle to control her sugar. Her sister, who's an educator, brought her into the office. They started the program. They started to consume only plant-based whole food served at, at my restaurant. In one week, her sugar dropped so low that as Dr. Bryce patient, that we had to lower the insulin remove the insulin, remove all our medication, of course, with, with my guidance. So I advise a person who has diabetes, who wants to make the change, to just get the correct resources. Their foods, they can look for the foods, go online and look for low glycemic index food. Look for low glycemic index food and ensure that most of their diet is filled with these type of foods. And what are they gonna be? The same, um, you know, vegetables. There are certain foods like the processed foods that they need to stay away from. But usually if they just ensure that they have more plants in their, on their plate, they will lower the sugar and they will not necessarily lose weight if they balance the meal well, eating the right type of carbohydrates, sweet potato, instead of white potato, brown rice, instead of white rice, just balance the plate well, they can actually gain weight. Because when the sugar, as you know, when the sugar is poorly controlled, they lose a lot of weight. Uh, okay, thanks, Dr. Cooper. A, a question came in and that's something I wanted to ask you too. As Adventists, even though we, we, we support not eating meat, we still eat a lot of veggie meat. Mm -hmm. Yes, that we is do, No, we do eat a lot of veggie meat, which is not, which is not, um, which is processed plant sure. products. Can you speak to this? Because there are lots of people who will not eat meat, but the veggie meat must, is, a, is, a, is, is, is their diet, is, is, is their meat, is their protein, it's that, what, that's what they eat, they eat. Thank you so much for that question. Um, I strongly believe in plant-based whole food, food is grown. I believe that the veggie meat 
it should only be a transitional phase, okay? For patients or people who are moving from meat to no meat, for a short period of time, they transition across to food as grown. Peas, beans, nuts, grains. I don't believe in this process foods. There was recently everybody wanted to have the uh, Impossible Burger. Impossible Burger is so unhealthy. 40% of that is cholesterol, it's highly processed. That's so I, I advise our Adventists who want to go to eating healthier to realize that the veggie meat is not the health, yes. They should only transition through veggie meat into food as grown. And there they will be healthier. Oh. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Dr. Bryce, we, we, you, you talked a lot about the, the diabetes and, and I just wanted um, control in your diabetes. I just want you to just expand a little bit on the complications of, of not having your blood sugar control and how it damages your organs. Because I think a lot of people are thinking that, oh yeah, I just need to control my sugar, but then there's nothing else that not controlling it does. Um, yes, I'm going to hyperglycemic coma or, or, or but what, and, and um, yes, I've been there, I've, I've gotten diabetic ketoacidosis or whatever you call it, whatever that, that has happened to them. They've gone into a, a diabetic coma, but they've recovered, but they're not understanding, not just going into a coma, but when your blood sugar is not controlled, what, how does it damage your body? What are the implications of not having your blood sugar controlled? Okay, so that's a great question. And um, let me go back a little bit to the, one of your previous questions is, um, how do you get started on this process? Um, the, the principles that I outlined, they were not just words. If you have diabetes, um, try and see if you can grab um, uh, a copy of what I just said and listen to it over and over again until you get those principles. Um, as Jamaicans, uh, we were brought here as slaves. We used to work. The fact that we survive the Middle Passage, we come here and we used to put on almost 20,000 calories a day in terms of work. And the food that we, I went back and look at uh, a video of the independence and I saw two overweight individuals in the video, 1962. Mm -hmm. We were Jamaicans, same genetic makeup. People were not overweight. I, I used to be at UWE. Coronary artery disease was a rare disease. Diabetes was, was, was not a very common thing. Way back in the 50s and the 60s, same Jamaicans, mm -hmm. okay? What's the difference? All right, so one of the principles that we outlined was that as, as, a, as a whole, we need to go back and think as if we're in the Garden of Eden. So Dr. Lewis Harvey, I mentioned eating sorrel, just peeling off the leaves and eating it, okay? Yes, I love sorrel. No, I drink sorrel where I, the dried sorrel that I get from the Mexican restaurant here. One day I was washing it and I realized all this red stuff coming out. And nice. so <laughs> I, I warm up the water a little bit and just pour it on the sorrel and the whole thing red full. So I take that with a little lime or lemon, no sugar, no alcohol, nothing to it. And that's what I drink. That's how I drink my sorrel. So I'm just giving you an idea. Okay, so the, the thing about it, it starts with a decision to right. trust God. That's where it starts. Mm -hmm. We don't understand how this diet works. Mm -hmm. We really don't know how a slim person okay, not with belly fat, has blood sugars of 600. These mutations are called, and using God makes method, he fixes it. Okay, so diabetes is one of the worst disease that you can ever get. And the reason for that is for 20 years, no pain, absolutely no discomfort. 
You have no symptom at all until one day you wake up and you are blind mm -hmm. or you have a massive stroke or, a heart attack. or you have a massive heart attack or you notice your breath start feeling funny and the doctor look at you and said, you know, your kidneys are gone. Or as they call me from South Africa one day, they call me from South Africa, the vice president of Angola went to South Africa, woke up one morning with his lower extremity black. This is a healthy man with diabetes on a trip for his country and they rushed him to the hospital told you need an amputation immediately. No symptoms, no symptoms for 20 years. Visiting Angola, vice president with all the big doctors and they told him, I said, listen, sir, you need an amputation immediately. He said, no, you white people just wanna kill me. I have to hear that from a black doctor. And this guy's son knows my daughter and call Yolanda and say, Yolanda, um, can you call my the hospital and, and talk to them? And Yolanda is a radiologist said, um, you might wanna to talk to my father, he's an internist. So they call me instead and I had to call um, South Africa and talk to this gentleman to say, listen, if you don't get the amputation, you ain't going back to, to Angola. You'll be dead before you go back. Sepsis infection will take over. Okay, that's the effect of diabetes. It's a slow cancer that has no symptoms at all for five, 10, 20 years until it hits you. And those are the good things. The really bad thing is that everything is fine. And one day your daughter come to visit you and you think that she's a criminal. You don't even recognize her. This diabetes take out your brain in a condition called multi-infarct dementia. That's how devastating this thing. It's not something to play with. And so we can't eat the way we used to eat when we used to work in the cane fields. We can't eat the same yam and dumpling and white bread and all of that with all that starch. It's a new, we have, and God brought it to us, my friends and gave it to us. It's just a matter of us accepting the fix and starting the journey. And I'm, before I finish, let me just mention this. Most of these people cannot do it alone. They need someone to step abreast with them. And that's where the church comes in. Every seven day Adventist church should have a diabetes small group. Just like Dr. Lewis, Dr. Um, Cooper, Do Donna, is partnering with a number of individuals who come with her program. She take them, teach them how to cook. These people cannot do it on their own, friends. We must partner with the people, teach them how to do it. Every Seventh-day Adventist church should have a program that every Sabbath afternoon, every Sunday, people can come and get help. Thank you, Dr. Cooper, Dr. Dr. Bryce. That, that's, that's, that, that's, that's very, very informative. Thank you so much for saying that. And I agree with you. I wish our, our churches would play a more critical role in not just telling people about Jesus, but also helping them to be healthy, to keep their bodies healthy so he can dwell in a healthy temple. And, 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 and Dr. D Pastor, I see you're very busy. I see you're a busy man today. But 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 Pastor, how 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 effective or, or, or how can we help in terms of the church? How can we help to incorporate this in our church? Uh. Good because question. I mean, we, we, we are, are, I know Sabbaths, I know our churches are, you know, there's a whole lot of programs. We have so many programs going on. How do we, how do we have to incorporate this in our church? I think that the first step is for us as pastors to develop a strong commitment to the value 
of a plant-based diet. There's still a lot of us who believe that, um, you know, uh, the other way seems to be easy.